Joining the military is not for the faint of heart. In order to turn the average citizen into a highly trained soldier, militaries around the world put them through a series of extreme tests to prove their abilities. But many of these tests are truly intimidating. From juggling grenades to jumping out of buildings, we are looking at the craziest known military exercises. In 2012, a video surfaced of the Chinese military taking part in one of the most mind-boggling military exercises imaginable. The video, which was leaked from state CCTV, shows a group of People's Army soldiers testing fate with a live grenade. You may be familiar with the exercise. It's the equivalent of hot potato, where participants will pass around a potato or some other random object until the music stops, and the person in possession of said object is eliminated from the game. It's kind of like that, although the unfortunate soldier in this game runs the risk of actually being eliminated by a live hand grenade. Thankfully, it is the job of the soldiers to dispose of the grenade into a large hole just before it detonates. One can only imagine that it's the ultimate test of a soldier's ability to cope under pressure. In the video, no one is injured, but if this is a frequent exercise, it's inevitable that someone will be hurt, or worse, in a matter of time. It is designed to turn the merely tough into the super tough. The Royal Marine's much-feared mud run is the toughest part of a 32-week training course said to turn civilians into commandos. You can see why even the strongest recruits dread it. Exhausted, demoralized, and covered in foul-smelling sludge from head to toe, these Royal Marine recruits hope one day to wear the coveted Green Beret, marking them out as the elite of Britain's fighting forces. The men need to call upon reserves, both mental and physical, that they didn't know they had, simply to get through the grueling ordeal. Captain Ben Chappelle, who oversees physical training at the Royal Marines Commando Training Center in Limstone, Devon, said, The mud run is about instilling a Royal Marine state of mind. The recruits spend up to 45 minutes in the mud that is so thick they can barely run, doing exercises and games, and it is so difficult that getting through it really builds team spirit. We're not just looking for physical strength, but mental resilience as well, and the team cohesion that comes from getting through the hardship together. This strength and cohesion forms parts of the Royal Marines' DNA. He said the recruits would not necessarily know when the run was coming up, saying it's all about dislocation of expectation. There is an argument about whether some people are genetically wired to handle colder temperatures, or whether one must build stamina for lower temperatures by training in colder environments. The US Navy SEALs put this to the test in a very palpable way. They do this through surf torture, also called cold water conditioning. The water temperatures usually hover around 65 degrees Fahrenheit and never go above 68 degrees Fahrenheit. From there, trainees may be ordered to do some calisthenics or run a mile and a half down the beach in their wet clothes and boots. Then they're ordered back into the surf. Many drills also require that teams carry their rubber boots over their heads as they run from one task to another. Even if the water is 90 degrees, your core temperatures will very slowly start to drop from its normal level of 98.6 degrees. The hours-long drill tests the personal resolve of all those involved and proves to superior officers who is most fit for war. The Russian military isn't known for having a gentle touch, so it should come as no surprise that their counterterrorism operations training is really tough. But just how tough is borderline insane? Russia's Federal Security Service, called the FSB, and successor to the KGB, shoots their agents center mass to give them confidence in a terrorist-controlled situation where bullets might be flying by their heads. The trainees, wearing body armor, absorb a few rounds before firing shots back at the target. In a video, the man in front of the target is Andre, an FSB operator, who doesn't flinch as three rounds zing by his head. They are forced to stand motionless, and then they wait for someone to casually walk past them, but then suddenly draw a pistol and shoot them repeatedly in the chest. After taking these hits, they are to return fire, and they have to aim just inches away from the attacker's unprotected face. In a second drill, the trainee is given multiple cardboard targets to shoot, but while he does so, he is pushed and shoved by trainers, who yell in his ear, while guns fire immediately adjacent to his ears. These are all supposed to simulate distractions on the battlefield and enhance the trainee's focus in stressful situations. Cobra Gold is one of the Indo-Pacific's largest multinational exercises. It's also the one where U.S. troops drink cobra blood. The exercise includes events such as an amphibious assault demonstration, landmine destruction, and a combined arms live fire exercise. But probably the most photographed event is the jungle survival training, during which Thai instructors share with the Americans their knowledge of life-sustaining jungle sources of food and water, plants, insects, and, of course, cobra blood. For instance, some plants can be a good source of water, and there are a lot of different fruits available for consumption. 
But when those options aren't available, marines can also eat geckos, gibbons, and even scorpions. Then, of course, there is one of the most iconic aspects of the Cobra Gold jungle survival training, drinking cobra blood. Royal Thai Marine instructors showed the troops how drinking the blood from a cobra can help them stay alive if there is no drinkable water, and can also provide essential nutrition. The pictures show the marines with their heads tilted back and sticking out their tongues as the instructor drips the blood down their throats. It's not for the squeamish, and even some hardened marines appear to have their eyes tightly shut as they get their taste of the cobra blood. In contrast, others seemed keen to have a drink of the blood of the deadly serpent. According to marines who have taken part in exercises in the past, the cobra blood tastes fishy. Belarus is not known for its human rights or its progressive politics. Many people consider it to be the last remaining dictatorship in Europe. And of course, to keep the dictatorship in power, the government needs an extremely fearsome military. In addition to training for chemical warfare with gas masks and protective equipment, the Belarusian special forces are required to undergo an obstacle course that is covered in flames. Nicknamed the Fire Walk, this exercise requires the soldiers to complete a 10K run with occasional bits of fire interspersed across the course. Sometimes they will need to walk through the fire, and other times they need to scale walls covered in flames. The special forces are undoubtedly an imposing unit. Belarus's ruling party has been accused of using its special forces to assassinate opposition leaders. Taiwan's Marine Corps' Road to Heaven is the final stage of a grueling 10-week amphibious training program. In order to become frogmen, candidates must crawl 164 feet over jagged, porous, coral rocks in a pair of shorts. The Road to Heaven starts with a hard fall from standing to planking position. The fall looks to be tough on the elbows, but immediately after, the recruits begin to crawl through the sharp rocks on the points of their knees and elbows. In some ways, the training simulates a landing on a rocky beach, but it appears to function mainly as a test in which the trainees must will themselves to conquer pain. The path has 10 stopping points, and at each one, the recruits must stop and perform an exercise. As they make their way, instructors pour salt water on them to exacerbate the pain of their open wounds. Friends and family of the trainees are encouraged to attend in order to make the soldiers more self-conscious. At the end of the long, rough road, they finally earn their place among the most elite soldiers in Taiwan. Back in 2012, two videos surfaced on the internet. The first showed Chinese soldiers breaking bricks with their heads for training. The second one similarly showed the South Korean army breaking concrete with their heads. Many believe this is merely to show the strength of the People's Liberation Army. If combat were simply a matter of showmanship, then the PLA would be near invincible. But military officials are acknowledging that such displays have few practical applications and are reconsidering the amount of time the troops spend on such training. The shift is a small but symbolically important part of China's broader effort to modernize its military. Going to war isn't a performance, Zhang Aijun, commander of a special operations brigade in Beijing, told PLA Daily, the official newspaper of the Chinese military. Troops training must stick close to the realities of combat and pay special attention to the urgent need to strengthen fighting skills. This is why the Chinese army discontinued the practice in 2014. Martial arts performances are a trademark, PLA Daily said of the brigade, which it did not identify in detail. For many years, they relied on these skills to display their abilities and win much praise. However, do these stunts have a practical use on the battlefield? Both US and South Korean soldiers took part in an impressive cold weather training drill in 2017. More than 400 soldiers took part in the drill, 200 South Koreans and 220 US troops normally stationed on the Japanese island of Okinawa. The exercise has been held since 2013 to train the military to be able to fight at temperatures as low as minus 4 Fahrenheit. More choreographed than tactical, the troops perform for a horde of media, which at times seem to outnumber the North Carolina-based Marines and their Korean counterparts during this annual photo op. An environment like this is unforgiving, said Captain Thomas Rigby, 33, of Company A, 1st Battalion, 8th Marines. The company commander from Red Bank, New Jersey, said his Marines use the harsh locale to focus on cold weather squad tactics and decision-making skills. Rigby said historic fights like the Korean War's Battle of Chosun Reservoir, in which Marines fought off and escaped a massive Chinese assault in 1950, have cemented the service's can-do, go-anywhere attitude. We're a jack of all trades, he said. We fancy ourselves to be able to fight in any clime and place. The idea is to acclimate soldiers to any intense conditions they may find themselves in. Service in the Israeli army is compulsory for all young Israeli citizens in good health. 
So recruits should hope that they are not forced into a controversial program in which they are forced to jump from the tops of skyscrapers and rappel down the buildings. The idea is to prepare the soldiers for the impact of a bomb on a building, so that they can get citizens out of the flaming structure safely. It is also a preparation for terrorist situations, where they need to enter a building covertly. Certainly, the drills have many applications, but hopefully the soldiers don't suffer from vertigo or fear of heights. These new recruits will be prepared to defend the Tel Aviv skyline.